Good afternoon everyone. Welcome back to the new normal class of Mathematics 7. Welcome to the second quarter, second week, entitled Measurements. This is the continuation of our first topic, last week measurements. But for now, we are going to tackle how to convert units of measurements. But before we are going to proceed to our topic, let us first have our objectives for today's discussion. So, at the end of this, you should be able to convert from one unit of length or mass of an object. Then second, convert from one unit of length or mass to another. And lastly, solve problems involving length and mass. So our main topic for today is about the conversion of units of measurements. The English system of measurement was widely used until 1800s and the 1900s, when the metric system of measurement standard to gain ground and become the most used system of measurement worldwide. The older generation of Filipinos is more comfortable with English system rather than the metric system. Although the Philippines have already adopted the metric system as its official system of measurement. The metric system of measurement is easier to use than English system of measurement since its conversion is factors would consistently be in the decimal system unlike the English system of measurement where units of lengths have different conversion factors. Check out the unit using a ruler, most likely they are inches and centimeters. So, inches is used by the English system and while the centimeter used by the metric system so here's an example of a ruler so the above that is four inches and below that is for centimeter or cm cm is the abbreviation of centimeters so in every english measurements to english measure measurements English measurements to metric measurements. So, in one foot, there are 12 inches. In English measurement to metric system, in one inch, there is 2.54 centimeter. In English system, in one foot, there are 57 yards. While in metric system, in one foot, there are 30 and 38 centimeters. In one yard, there is 36 inches. In one yard, there is 9.9 rather 0.9 meters in one mile there are 500,280 feet in one mile that is equivalent to 1.6 kilometer so always remember this table because this will be your guide in solving the in solving how to convert unit from another unit so Here's are the steps in conversion of units. First, identify the unit you are starting with. Second, identify the unit you want to end with. Third, find a conversion factor or factors that will convert the starting unit to ending unit. Using the fractional form, the unit you want to end will be the numerator and the unit to be cancelled will be the denominator. Set up the mathematical expression so that all units except the unit you want to end with will not be cancelled. So always remember, if you are going to cancel the unit, it should be in numerator and denominator. You cannot cancel a unit if it is numerator and numerator or denominator and denominator. Instead, it should be opposite, numerator and denominator. So let's follow the steps in solving this one. For example, we have convert 36 inches to feet. So step one, identify the unit you are starting with. So we are going to convert this 36 inches to feet. So our starting unit is inches. Then identify the unit you want to end with that is for feet. Then step 3, find the conversion factors that will convert the starting unit to ending unit. Using the fractional form, the unit you want to end will be the numerator. The unit to be cancelled will be the denominator. 
since we are starting with inches, we are looking for the denominator of inches as well. So we have in every one foot, there are 12 inches. So now, Let's proceed with step 4. Set up mathematical expressions so that all units except the unit you want to end with will not be cancelled. So in, we have 36 inches times in every 1 foot there are 12 inches. So now we can cancel out the inches. Then 36 times 1 divided by 12. That is 3 feet. So the final answer is 3 feet. Therefore, in 36 inches, there it is equivalent to 3 feet. Feet times 5,280 feet divided by 1 mile times 12 inches divided by 1 foot. So we can cancel out miles as well as foot or feet. So we have 2 times 5,280 times 12. So that is 1,200 or 126,720 inches. So therefore, in every 2 miles, or the equivalent of 2 miles is equal to 126,720 inches. Next, convert 9 feet to meters. So identify the unit you are starting with for step 1 that is for foot. Then step 2, identify the unit you want to end with that is meters. So find the conversion factors for step 3 that is in every 1 yard there are 3 feet and in every... 1 yard, that is equivalent to 0 0.9 meters. So, now let's set up a mathematical expression so that all units except the unit you want to end with will not be cancelled. So, we have 9 feet times 1 yard divided by 3 feet times 0 0.9 meter divided by 1 yard. So, always remember that if you are going to multiply a fractions to a whole number, always remember that a whole number has... A constant number denominator of 1. So 9 times 1 times 0 0.9 divided by 3. So that is equivalent to 2.7 meters. So the equivalent of 9 feet is equal to 2.7 meters. So nowadays, the use of metric system of measurement is recommended because computations are easier in this system for it uses the power of 10. There are prefixes that describe each power of 10. Here are the prefixes used for the base, unit, for length, mass, volume, and other measurements metric system. So we have first the prefixes, then the symbol or the abbreviation and the factor, then after that the power of 10. So tera, that is 40, and that is equivalent to 1 trillion or 10 to the power of 12 and giga that is 1 billion so that is 10 to the power of 9 and mega that is m then the factor of that is 1 million then that is equivalent to 10 raised to the power of 6 then kilo that is 4k and that is 1000 so that is 10 raised to 3 then we have hecto that is that is h and the factor of that is 100, and that is 10 raised to 2. Then we have deca, that the symbol of that is da, that is 10, or 10 to the power of 1. So then after that, we have the deci, that is, the symbol of that is d, and that is equivalent to 1 over 10, or 10 raised to the power of negative 1. Then, if you notice this one, after that 10 raised to 1, then the op opposite of that is 10 to the power of negative 1. So therefore, deca and deci is opposite, hecto and centi that is also opposite, then milli and kilo that is opposite, then micro and mega that is opposite also, then nano and giga. So always remember that one, that starting with the deci until to nano, that is for the smallest number. So you are looking for a fraction. While in tera, af tera to deca, that is a bigger number. So you are you have a full number. So always remember this one: the conversion of unit of measurement. So if you are going to move to the right, just simply multiply ten. 
that is constant because we are using for the power of 10. So, bigger unit to a smaller unit, you multiply times 10. After that, if you are going to convert smaller unit to a bigger unit, you are going to divide by 10. Move to the left or move to the right. That, that is the simplest way of converting a, a metric system. So, here's an example. Convert 5.43 meters to centimeters. So, method 1, using metric converter. Method 2, using the conversion factor. So, let's follow first the method 1. In converting meter to centimeter, we will move 2 units to the right. So, in 5 and 43, we will move the decimal point 2 places to the right. So, from now from... 5.43 meter that is equivalent to 543 centimeters. So therefore, the equivalent of 5.43 meter in centimeter that is 543. So in method 2, we are looking for the conversion factor. So we have 100 centimeter divided by 1 meter. So, here's the solution. So, 5.53 rather meter times 100 centimeter divided by 1 meter. So, always remember that the equivalent of 1 meter is 100 centimeter. In order for us to cancel out the unit meter, we are looking for the opposite. Since this is 5.43 meter, we are looking for the denominator which is also a meter. So, we have 100 centimeter divided by 1 meter so, so that we can cancel out the meter units. Then, 5.43 times 100 that is equivalent to 543 centimeters. So, whatever the method you are going to use, it will end up to the same answer. Example 2. Convert 650 meters to kilometers. So using metric converter, in converting meter to kilometer, we will move 3 units to the left. So um, we have meter, DAM, then hectometer, and kilometer. So, so in 6500, we will move the decimal point 3 places to the left. So now we have 6,500 meter that is equivalent to 6.5 kilometer. So in the method 2, using the conversion factor, always remember that in 1 kilometer that is equivalent to 1,000 meter. So we have 6,500 meter times 1 kilometer divided by 1,000 meter. So we can cancel out the unit meter then multiply 6,500 times 1. That is 6.5 kilometer. Then, we have the converter diagram for mass or weight. So, the unit of mass is weight or, or mass or weight or then the symbols then equivalent of mass or weight. So, always remember the difference only is the unit we are going to use for the length we are going to use meter for the mass or weight we are going to use grams and for the volume we are going to use liters so for now let's have first mass or weight so in every 10 milligrams the symbol is milligram or mg then the equivalent is this of this is one centigram so in every 10 centigram or CG, the equivalent is 1 decigram. So, in every 10 decigrams, the equivalent of this is 1 gram. In 10 grams, there is 1 decagram. In 10 decagram, there is 1 hectogram. In 10 hectogram, there is 1 kilogram. So, method 1. And using metric converter. So, we are going to convert... 350 grams into kilograms. So, from grams, we are going to move 3 places to the left. So, from 350 grams, that is equivalent to 0 0.35 kilogram. In method 2, using the conversion factor, in every 1 kilogram, there is 
1000 gram. So 350 gram times 1 kilogram divided by 1000 gram. So we can cancel out the the unit gram then multiply 350 times 1 divided by 1000. So that is equivalent to 0.35 kilogram. So whatever the unit As what I've said a while ago, whatever the method you are going to use, still we have we will come up with the same answer. Number two, convert 48 hectogram to centigram. So using the metric converter for method one, in converting hectogram to centigram, we will move four units to the right. So in 48, we are going to multiply. 1,000. We will move the decimal point four places to the right. Now, 48 hectogram. Then we we are going to move four places. That is equivalent to 480,000 centigram. Then in number two, our method to use in the conversion math factor that is one in every one hectogram there is or there are what ten thousand centigram. So now cancel out hectogram. Then multiplied 48 times 10,000. That is equivalent to 480,000 centigram. So in every one hectogram, that is equivalent to 10,000 centigram. So the equivalent of 48 hectogram is equal to 480,000 centigram. The converter of diagram for mass or capacity, or the volume, that is not mass, that is for volume. So we are using the unit liter. So before we are using the metric system that is for the length. We are measuring the length that is for meter. Then after that, if we are going to look for the measurement of mass, that is the unit of that is gram. Now. Since this is the capacity, we are using the unit of liter. So kiloliter, hectoliter, decaliter, liter, deciliter, centiliter, and milliliter. So th that is, they are the same with the mass and the meter. The difference is only the unit we are going to use. So here's the example: convert 414. 1,600 milliliter to dAL. So, in converting ml to dAL, we will move four units to the left. So, in 4,000, in 414,600, we will move to the des the decimal point four places to the left. So, that is equivalent to 41.46 dAL. In Method two using the conversion factor in one dAL that is equivalent to ten thousand mL. So cancel out the mL unit, then multiply the four hundred fourteen thousand six hundred by one. Then after that divide it by ten thousand. Then the answer is forty one point forty six dAL. Number two convert twenty six liters to centiliter. So In converting, we will move two units to the right from liter to centiliter. So, in 26, we will move the decimal point two places to the right. So that is equivalent to 26. Or since this is moved to the right, so 26 move two places to the right. So that is equivalent to 2,600. Then, for the method two, we are using in every one liter there are one hundred centiliter. So twenty six liter times one hundred that is equivalent to two thousand six hundred centiliter. Then we have the measurement of time. So before time is measured by the rotation of the Earth on its axis, which is equivalent to a whole day, and the revolution of the Earth around the Sun, which is equivalent to one year or 365 and one fourth days. Every four years, a day is added to account for the one fourth day in excess 
each year. Such year with 29 days in February is called a leap year. So the following shows the units used to measure time with their corresponding equivalent factor. The measures of time. So all of this is all about the measurement of time. So the following slides still talks about measurement of so we have in your elementary days you already know this one the equivalent of 60 seconds is one minute in 60 minutes that is one hour in 24 hours that is one day in 12 months that is one year in 365 days that is also one year so 366 days that is one leap year so it is because the there is 29 days in february so that is why we called one leap year so in every 10 years that is one decade in 20 years that is one square in 100 years that is one century and 1000 years that is one millennium So, here's an example. How many seconds are there in one day? Identify the unit you are starting with, that is day. Then identify the unit you want to end with, that is for seconds. Always remember that in every one day, there is a 24 hours. And in every one hour, there is a 60 minutes. In every one minute, there are 60 seconds. So, you are going to multiply that factors into one day. So, you are going to cancel out the day unit, the hour unit, as well as the minute unit. So, 1 times 24 times 60 times 60, that is equivalent to 86,400. So, 1 day is equivalent to 86,400 seconds. Example 2. How many hours are there in one year? So, identify the unit you are starting with, that is year. Identify the unit you want to end with, that is hour. So, find the conversion factor that is in every one day, there are 24 hours. In one year, there are 365 days. So, you are going to multiply one year to that factor, 365 days, divided by one year times 24 hours, divided by one day. So, you are looking for 8,700 hours. So, Cancel out the year unit as well as the day unit. So you are simply multiplying the unit or the number 1 times 365 times 24. So that is equivalent to 8,760 hours. So let's proceed with the measures of temperature. The temperature is the measurement of the degree of hotness or coldness of an object or substance. It commonly uses the units of Celsius for the metric system and Fahrenheit for the English system. The base of standard unit for this temperature is Kelvin. Unlike Celsius and Fahrenheit, which are considered degrees, Kelvin is considered as an absolute unit of measurement and therefore can be worked and algebraically. Here are some conversion factors. So we have the conversion formula for temperature for the degree Fahrenheit that is equal to 9 over 5 degrees Celsius plus 32. If you are going to look for the degree Celsius, that is 5 over 9 times degree Fahrenheit minus 32. If you are going to look for the Kelvin, that is degree Celsius plus 273.15. So always remember this formula because this will be helpful to you in solving or in converting temperature. So here's the example number one. Convert 27 degree Celsius to degree Fahrenheit. Step one. Identify the unit you are starting with. So that is degree Celsius. Identify the unit you want to end with degree Fahrenheit. Then find the conversion factors of or, or formula that is degree Fahrenheit is equal to 9 over 5 degree Celsius plus 32. Then substitute the value of Celsius that is 27. So 27 times 9 divided by 5, that is 48.6 plus 32, that is equivalent to 80.6 degree Fahrenheit. So therefore, 27 degree Celsius is equal to 80.6 degree Fahrenheit. 
Example number 2. Convert 95 degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius. So, the unit starting with is degree Fahrenheit, then we will end up to degree Celsius. So, the conversion or formula of this is degree Celsius is equal to 5 over 9 times degree Fahrenheit minus 32. Then, after that, substitute the value of degree Fahrenheit, which is 95 minus 32, that is 63, times 5 divided by 9. So, that is equivalent to 35 degree celsius therefore in 95 degree celsius that is equivalent to 35 degree fahrenheit so next convert 14 degree fahrenheit to kelvin identify the unit you are starting with that is degree fahrenheit then you will end up with kelvin so the formula is degree celsius is equal to 5 over 9 times degree Fahrenheit minus 32, then Kelvin is equal to degree Celsius plus 273.15. So, as you can see, we are going to use the two formulas. First, we are going to look for the degree Celsius, then let's convert it into Kelvin. So, since there is no conversion from degree Fahrenheit to Kelvin, we will convert first degree Fahrenheit to degree Celsius, then after that to Kelvin. So, here's the solution. So, degree, Fahrenheit, degree Celsius is equal to 5 over 9 times degree Fahrenheit minus 32. So, the given is 14, then substitute the value of degree Fahrenheit, which is 14 times 14 minus 32, that is negative. Okay, times the value of 5 divided by 9, so degree Celsius is equal to negative 10. After that, that degree Celsius, substitute that 1 into the formula Kelvin is equal to degree Celsius plus 273.15. So, the value of degree Celsius is negative 10 degrees plus 273.15. So, you are going to subtract since they have unlike signs. So, 263.15. Therefore, in 14 degree Fahrenheit, that is equivalent to 263.15 Kelvin. So, choose the letter of your answer. Write your answer on space provided. So, this will be your activity in your module. So, 5 decades is equal to blank years A5, B50, C500, D5000. Always remember that 1 in one decade, that is equivalent to 10 years. So, since the given is 5 decades, just simply multiply 5 times 10. That is equivalent to 50. So, always remember that 1. Number 2, 180 seconds is equivalent to how many minutes? So, always remember in one minute, there is an equivalent of 60 seconds. So, just simply 180 seconds divided by 60, that is 3 minutes. So, number 3. 42 days is equal to how many hours? Always remember, in one hour, there is a 24... In one day, there is a 24 hour. So, since there is 42, just simply multiply 42 times 24. Then you can look... For, then you can find the value of hours. For number 4, 48 hours... So, always remember that in every one hour, there is a 60 minutes. In one minute, there is a 60 seconds. So, just simply multiply 48 times 60 times 60. For degree Fahrenheit, always remember the formula of the temperature. So, you are going to use for degree Fahrenheit. So, any question for this? So, if there's none, let's proceed with your activity. If you have any queries or clarifications or questions regarding our topic for today, just simply contact me to my cell phone number, Sir930-680-829. Or you may log on to our new LCMS, HTTPS, double slash gaetf that seems that school slash lcms so have a great day everyone stay safe and god bless